This is the 42-inch LG C2, the world's first 42-inch OLED TV. And with some luck, I might be the world's first person to do an unboxing video of an LG 42 C2. Because the size is smaller than what I'm used to, I thought I'd try something different. After taking the OLED panel out from the box, I gently rested it sideways against the wall to make it easier for me to install the feed. Now, the pair of feet are labeled A and B instead of left and right, but I couldn't find the corresponding A and B labels on the TV itself, and so had to work things out by aligning the tiny notches. In hindsight, it's not easy to apply the screws with the panel sideways, so you may be better off following the instructions in the manual by laying the screen face down on a soft surface. Anyway, I got it done and proceeded to peel away the protective film from the front of the screen. I then used the supplied magic remote to fire up the television and check things out. Similar to the larger 48-inch C2 I previously unboxed, the 42-inch LG C2 OLED uses an O22 chipset which is a new SoC not found on 2021 models. The JB compensation interval has also been lowered to run every 500 hours instead of every 2,000 hours which has been the case on pre-2022 OLED TVs from LG. However, when I used my Jetty 1511 spectral radiometer to measure the spectral power distribution of my 42C2 retail unit I bought myself, I was surprised to find a WBC panel underneath, as indicated by the broader blue half-width, not to mention the lack of clear separation between green and red peaks. Maybe 42-inch LG C2 OLEDs purchased later in the year will carry deuterium-based WBE panels, and I'm just unlucky because I've timed it too early. Again. Using a calorimetry research CR100 meter profile to a CR250 RH spectral radiometer, I measured the peak brightness on my retail sample to be 690 nits on a 10% window in filmmaker mode and 115 nits full fill. Please bear in mind that these were just out-of-the-box measurements with zero run-in time, to give you guys an idea of the television's peak brightness. I will take more readings to be included in my full technical review once I've run in the tally for at least 100 hours and calibrated it. In any case, these early peak luminance figures are similar to what I measured from the larger 48C2 I bought, which is equipped with a WBE panel. Any difference is likely to be due to panel-to-panel -panel variance. This suggests that irrespective of WBC or WBE panel use, the 42-inch and 48-inch C2s will be tuned by LG to deliver a similar level of brightness and ABL algorithm, with the brightness booster technology only reserved for 55-inch and larger models. In this side-by-side -side comparison, hopefully you can also appreciate the size difference between the 42C2 and the 48C2. Just like on the 48-inch C2 I tested briefly 10 days ago, once you set true motion to user selection on the LG 42C2, the OLED motion black frame insertion setting is now only an on-off toggle. Some of you have asked if there's any difference with a 120 frames per second video signal. So here, I'm playing a demo loop from the Buridio 7G signal generator at 120 FPS, as you can see from the VRR info bar at the top right corner of the screen. Switching between OLED motion on and off repeatedly, I couldn't see any difference whatsoever in terms of motion clarity and luminance drop, which means black frame insertion or BFI did not take effect on a 120 frames per second video signal. This suggests that 120Hz black frame insertion has truly been removed from the LG C2 OLED, and I wonder whether this is a decision made by LG Electronics or panel supplier LG Display. I suppose we will find out once we get our hands on 2022 OLED televisions from other brands. Next, input lag measurements. But before that, I would like to thank our sponsor for this video. Richer Sounds, which is one of the first retailers in the UK, maybe even the world, to have the 42-inch LG C2 in stock. Visit richersounds.com for more details. I will leave the link in the YouTube description below. Thanks again for your support. Okay. With game optimizer mode engaged, input lag measured 13 milliseconds at 60 frames per second, 
dropping to 9.5 milliseconds if boost mode was enabled inside the game optimizer menu on the 42C2. At 120 frames per second, input lag was halved, coming in at a crazy responsive 4.8 milliseconds. These latency figures are essentially the same as those measured on last year's C1 OLED. They are as quick as you can get on a consumer TV. One improvement that I forgot to mention in my previous C2 vs C1 video is the C2's higher HDMI 2.1 bandwidth, coming in at the full 48 gigabits per second according to the Edit readout from a Muridio 7G signal generator, with 24 gigabits per second of DSC or display stream compression to boot which is a nice surprise. Realistically though, only PC gamers can take advantage of 48 gigabits per second to achieve 4K 120Hz at 12-bit 444, since the Xbox Series X tops out at 40 gigabits per second, while the PS5 only has an HDMI 2.1 bandwidth of 32 gigabits per second. Besides an increase in HDMI 2.1 bandwidth, there are many new features implemented on the LG C2 OLED, which were not found on last year's C1, and you can learn about these upgrades by watching this video here.